Well, praise the Lord. Welcome, family, Facebook, and friends. Welcome to all of our members and all of our supporters. Well, it's Wednesday night, 6 o'clock p.m. Central Time. How many of you guys are ready to get into the Word of God? I said, how many of you guys are ready to get into the Word of God? Amen. Well, tonight we're going to introduce a new topic to you. Amen. Praise God. And uh, tonight we're going to talk about the most essential. Most essential. I wonder how many of you all can tell me what is the most essential? Now, you know, we kind of been hearing that word since the pandemic hit, uh, the coronavirus, uh, when it came to the United States. Then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, I should say, we begin to hear most essential. Amen. Praise God. And that's when uh, something on the inside of me rose up. And, uh, you know, when they said most essential, we're going to talk more about that in just a minute. Praise God. Hallelujah. And so our subject that we're going to begin today is called most essential. And I wonder what is the most essential? What's the most essential to you, ma'am? Sir, what is the most essential? What is most important to you? Amen. Praise God. So let's begin our subject for tonight. Let's pray. Most gracious Father, once again, we just thank you. We count it an honor and a privilege to get into your word. And Lord, we thank you that as we get into your word, that your word will come alive. And Lord, we just thank you tonight, Father, for the great teacher among us, the Holy Spirit. Uh, we thank you the Holy Spirit shall teach us, shall lead us and guide us into all truth. And Lord, we thank you that as we begin this subject on most essential, yes. we thank you that your word will come alive to us and that we'll receive revelation knowledge about what is the most essential thing in this earth. Yeah. And Father, we just thank you tonight. Father, I thank you that the listeners' ears are accurately anointed as well to receive your word tonight, that they'll not be hearers only, but they'll be hearers and doers of your word. Yeah. Lord, I thank you my tongue is like that of a ready writer, ready to write upon the hearts of your people, your uncompromised, holy, and infallible word. And Lord, we shall be careful to give you all of the glory, honor, and praise for what shall be revealed tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise amen. God. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Uh, <clears throat> we're talking about the most essential. And just so happened, as I said a minute ago, this message was a result of what happened almost, what, a year ago now when COVID-19 pandemic hit the United States of America. And, you know, people begin to contract the illness and a lot of people begin to die. Therefore, our national, if, if I can remember everything, our national and statewide government put out an edit, E-D-I-T, an edit that would determine what they thought was the most essential, such as institution, places of employment, <clears throat> hospitals, schools and other organizations that would remain open to eliminate, <coughs> excuse me, crowds of people associating and fellowshipping with each other. So, you know, they coined that phrase, most essential, and that's really what stood out. Everybody was saying most essential. And so again, the whole idea was to stop the spread of the coronavirus. But something that I noticed, I noticed that the church was not named as an essential institution that needed to remain open. So therefore, you know, the thought came to me, you know, how are we to defeat this deadly virus without the word of God being taught? I mean, how are we going to be able, I know there are other places and institutions and, and organizations that need to be open, and yet uh, they begin to look at the church as not being essential. And so thoughts began to just roll around in me and I understood where they were coming from, but then I saw the other side of that deal as well. So I, you know, I began to think of creative ways, me and the wife, you know, we sat down, you know, just start thinking about how else can we get the word of God out if we can't have in-person service. Right, right. So, you know, my thinking was, how can we survive without the word of God being taught when all the churches are closed? Mm. And so, you know, 
My wife and I, we kind of looked at each other like, oh boy. Now we understood why they were saying what they were saying, but man, to shut all the churches down, was that possible? So I'm going to tell you what rose up in my spirit was <clears throat> that the word of God is the most essential remedy to combat the ills of society. And that's what kind of came up out my spirit. <clears throat> you know, they got to talking about most essential and and, and, and I, I didn't hear nobody say that the word of God was the most essential. That's what rose up up my spirit. You know, most essential was what's more important than everything. You know, the first thing that rose up my, out of my spirit was well, got to be the word of God. Yeah. And, you know, now don't get me wrong. Thank God for doctors and hospitals and their wisdom that they have comes from the almighty God. Right. Amen. And thank God if it had not been for hospitals and doctors, probably a lot of us wouldn't even be here today. So I'm not knocking that. But the point, I, I got this message coming out of that called the most essential. And, and I submit to you that hospitals being open, come, come on now, they are not the most essential thing in this world. Huh? Doctors are not the most essential. Uh, uh, institutions of higher learning is not the most essential. And, and so what came to me was, my God, the word of God is the most essential thing. Huh? The word of God. So, again, I'm not knocking modern medicine, uh, you know, and uh, but we must remember that no modern medicine can really heal you. It can put a band-aid on a situation. It can help you to get yourself together, you know, right. medicine helps you to get your act together, begin to operate in the faith of God so that you can eradicate that illness. Yeah, that's right. Are you guys with me? Yeah. So, you know, we're not pushing away modern medicine. I'm not pushing away doctors and hospitals. Thank God for them because a lot of us wouldn't be here today. Right. All they do is they help us and they help to sustain us until we can get our faith together. Yeah. Okay. But don't forget that doctors and hospitals institutions of higher learning and all these other places that they call most essential, they cannot, hear me, they cannot take the place of the word of God. They cannot. Nothing in this world can take the place of the word of God. No doubt the word of God is the most essential thing that you could ever have. I'm going to say it again. The word of God is the most essential thing that you can ever have. It is the most important. You can't do without the word of God. Did you hear me? You cannot do without the word of God. God is our healer. One of his seven redemptive names is he is Jehovah Rapha. He is our personal physician. And in fact, turn with me to Exodus 15. And we kind of covered a little bit of this on Sunday, talking about Christ the healer. Amen. Praise God. Exodus chapter 15. The word of God is the most essential. It's the most important. You can't live without the word of God. I don't know about y'all. I can't live without the word of God. Now you can live without a lot of other things, but you cannot live without the word of God. And that's where this message came from. Again, we're not here to knock doctors and hospitals and institutions of higher learning and all that. No, we're not here to knock the government. No, 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 no. no. Thank God for them. Amen. But what is the most essential thing in this earth is the word of God. And we can never neglect the word of God. Come on now. I, I tell you, the word of God, I, let me tell you, it is the most essential thing that you can ever possess. Amen. Praise God. Now, Exodus 15, verse 26, and said, If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes, or keep the word of God, I will put none of these diseases or I will not allow any of these diseases to come on you, mm -hmm. which I have brought upon the Egyptians. Why? Because I am the Lord that healeth thee. I am Jehovah Rapha. I am your personal physician. Now turn with me to Psalms 107. Amen. Praise. That's the word of God, man. I, I tell you, yes. 
Heaven and earth will pass away, but he said, my word shall remain forever. A lot of things have passed away. You know, thank God for modern medicine and all that, but even more important than modern medicine. In fact, modern, modern medicine get their wisdom from God. They get their wisdom from the almighty God. They get it from El Elyon, the most high God. Everything comes from God. God created everything. He's our maker. He knows how to fix us. He knows how to fix the social ills of this world. God can fix any and everything, okay? So God's word is the most essential thing. Psalms 107 and verse 20, the Bible said, he sent, well, I'll wait until you get there. Psalms 107 and verse 20. And that's what our series is our series is going to be all about. God's word is the most essential thing that you can ever possess. That's good. That's good. God's word is the most essential. Mm -hmm. Thank God there are other essential things in this world, but nothing is more essential than the word of God. Yeah. You know, your car might be essential. Your home is essential. Mm -hmm. uh, all these other organizations are essential. The government is essential, but let me tell you, there's nothing more essential. I'll say it again. There is nothing more essential. There is nothing more essential than the word of God. Yes. Psalms 107 verse 20, the Bible said, he sent his word. Underline that. He sent what? His word. He did what? He sent his word. Yes and healed them yep. and delivered them from their destructions. Amen. Yes. I said he sent his word. Yes. I said he sent his word. Hallelujah. Yes. Now turn with me to Luke's gospel chapter four. Luke's gospel chapter four. Note there, he sent his word. He sent his word because let me tell you, the day gonna come, I promise you, if you have not already experienced it, you know, the world can try to help us out the best way that they can. Doctors will try to help you. Institutions of higher learning try to help you. And all sorts of wonderful places that have been created here, that are established here in the earth. They're all fine and they're dandy. But let me tell you, the day may come. The day may come when the world's institutions cannot help you, where modern medicine cannot help you, mm -hmm. where modern education cannot help you. Institutions of higher learning cannot answer your problems. Are you with me? But the word of God can, and the word of God will. Amen? But notice here in Luke's Gospel, chapter 4, a very familiar passage of Scripture, and let's begin there at verse 1. Luke's Gospel, chapter 4, and verse 1. And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan. Mm -hmm. Note there, he was full of the Holy Ghost. And he returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Verse 2, being 40 days tempted of the devil. Yeah. So we see here, Jesus is going through temptation, tests and trials, right? Mm -hmm. Being 40 days tempted of the devil. And in those days, he did eat nothing. In other words, he was fasting. And when they were ended, he afterward hungered. He was hungry. Okay? Mm -hmm. 40 days and nights, hey, you be hungry too. Note there, verse 3. And the devil said unto him, if, trying to get him to question who he was, if thou be the son of God, command this stone that it might be made bread. Hmm. And Jesus answered him, saying, It is written. Notice how he answered him. He answered him with the word of God. Mm -hmm. Not just something off the top of his head. Not some tradition or philosophy. Come on now. Come on. Uh, some scheme. No. Right. He answered with the word of God. When Satan comes to test, tempt, and try you, you need to have the word of God on the inside of you to deal with the different temptation tests and trials that we go through in life. Yeah. It's going to require the word of God to deal with this COVID-19. Yeah. It's going to require the word of God to deal with racism. Yeah. It's going to require the word of God to deal with all the ills of society. That's 
Okay. No, no, notice what Jesus said. He said, it is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by what? Every word of God. Come on now. But by what? Every word of God. This is how man ought to live. This is how you make your living. How? By the word of God. In other words, what bread and water is to the flesh of man is what the word of God is to the spirit of man. Let me say that again. You know, uh, doctors tell you and, 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 and scientists will tell you that there are two things that, that, that man needs to survive, physical man, and that's bread and water, right? Well, what bread and water is to the physical part of man is what the word of God is to the spirit of man. And the Bible tells us that man is a spirit, okay? And he has a soul that deals with mind, will, and emotion, and he lives in a physical body. So what bread and water is to the physical man is what the word of God is to the spirit of man or the real you. In order for the real you to survive, you need the word of God. You need the word of God. And man is searching for all kinds of things to survive in this life outside the word of God. It's going to require the word of God. Now, what is meant by essential? You know, though since the world seemingly have coined this phrase, most essential, well, let's define essential. Essential means something that you can't live or do without. Something that you can't live or do without. It means the utmost importance, something that is what? The utmost importance or extremely important, absolute necessary, crucial and indispensable. So again, essential means something that you can't live and do without, something that is of utmost importance, something that is extremely important, I mean extremely important, absolute necessary, crucial and indispensable. What are you trying to say, Pastor? Having God's word is a matter of life and death. Let me say that again. Having God's word is a matter of life and death. This is how you live. This is how you move. Without the word of God, you'll see nothing but death. God's word is the most essential thing that there is in this earth. In fact, I believe with all my heart that the day is coming when the word of God will become our soul source. Let me tell you, and that day coming real fast. Let me tell you, that line of demarcation is coming. Amen. That day is coming when the word of God will become our soul source. For everything that can be shaken up on the earth will be shaken. But the word of God will never, ever change. I'm talking about everything in this earth is being shook up. I mean, politics, government, uh, ethnicity, race against race, all this stuff, health, everything, anything that can be shook up is being shaken. I mean, anything, I'm t everything is being shook up right now. If it ain't nailed down by the word of God, it ain't going to last. Amen. So I believe that we're living in that day too. I believe that day, I mean, it's here that the word of God must become our soul source. In fact, our anchor should be in the word of God. Yeah. That should be our anchor. What? The word of God. That should be your anchor that keep you consistent, that keep you solid, where you're not shifty beady. You know, not, you know, where you're all over the place. We live in a day where, especially with Christians, you got to be careful. It, it appears that Christians are all over the place. I, I mean, uh, honey, what do you call them things? Conspiracy theories. What are you talking about? I just want to warn some of y'all that I've been warning you for the last, what, six months? Watch out for all these theories, philosophies, and theories, conspiracies. Look, you better make sure that you understand the word of God. Forget all that mess. Heaven and earth will pass away, but he said, my word shall remain forever. The word of God should be our anchor. That's why we're called a word church. <laughs> now, everybody that, 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 
that uses that phrase are not word churches. They so far from being a word church, my God, let me tell you. No, that means that you're standing on the word of God. Amen. That the word of God have preeminence in your life. Let me say that again. The word of God should have preeminence or first place in our life. Not conspiracy theories. Not television and social media. Not your mama and your daddy. Not all these other folk. The word of God. You even got to watch preachers. Oh, I didn't, I've been hearing so much John God and my God. Where's the word of God at in all this mess? Everybody got everything to say about racism and all this other stuff, politics, government. Man, who cares? What do the word of God has to say? That's the only thing that matters. And that's the only thing that's going to last. The only thing going to last in this earth is the word of God. And if you want to last, you better get to the whole... Get a hold of the word of God and quit trying to get a hold of all these conspiracy theories and who doing what and all this. Man, I could care less. You make yourself aware, hear me, make yourself aware of what's going on around you, but that is not where your anchor should be. Your trust should not be, let me tell you, in a preacher, it shouldn't be in a politician, it shouldn't be in all these other things that, oh no, our total trust our total trust ought to be in the word of God. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Not all this other stuff. Heaven and earth will pass away, but he said, my word shall remain forever. Yeah. Can I get an amen? amen? In fact, did you know that God's word is more sure than any outward manifestation? You better watch yourself. We living in the day. Well, I'm going to tell you, Satan will come up with some tricks. God's word is more sure than any outward manifestation. In fact, turn with me to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. You know, we're not to be living off of just prophecies. People prophesying and all this. No, no, no. You're not to conduct your life totally. Hear me? Prophecy has its place. And it's very important. Hear me now. Don't run off. Prophecy has its place. Okay? But you're not to live your life by prophecies and conspiracy theories and all this other stuff. We're to live our life by the word of God. We're supposed to be word people. If the prophecy is not lining up with the word, then dump it. Put it on the shelf. Everything that comes forth should come forth as a result lining up with the word of God. Come on now. Come on now. Glory to God. The Holy Spirit said, he will not speak of himself, only that which the Father tell him. I, I, I remember hearing Brother Hagin said, this guy told him one time, oh, I got something that you can't even find in the Bible. Brother Hagin said, what? Oh, yeah, Brother Hagin. I got a big one. You can't even find this in the Bible. And Brother Hagin said, hey, you too far out for me, baby. Yeah, I mean, when you got prophecies that don't line up with the word, if it don't line up with the word of God, man, put it on the shelf. Yeah. But we are not to live our lives. We are not to live our lives by prophecies mm-hmm. or even signs and wonders. Right, right. I'm going to tell you why in just a moment. Huh? We're to live our lives by the word of God. Yeah. By the word of God. Hallelujah. Yeah. What do the word say? You can't find it in the word. You are not under any obligation to receive it. People giving you prophecies and all this mess and none of it line up with the word of God. Twisting stuff and turning stuff. That ain't what the Bible's saying. That's why you better know for yourself. For we walk by faith, not prophecies, conspiracy theories and what all these other folk yakking out here. We walk by faith and not by sight. And that's faith in the word of God. We got to live our lives based on the word, not all this other stuff. Now, thank God for prophecy and all that when it lines up with the word of God. That's how Brother Hagin taught us. It should line up even when he prophesied. He said, hey, if it don't fit, then just put it on the shelf. Just put it on the shelf. It should line up with the word of God. That's why there should be somebody there to judge it. That's a whole nother teaching for another day. Mm-hmm. I know at my church, you can get up if you want. I don't have no problem with that. Be led of the Holy Ghost. But if it don't line up with the word of God, 
I will tell you, we don't receive that. Right. You are non-profit to all of us. I'll tell you. <laughs> Amen. Praise right. God. If it ain't lining up with the word of God, we don't receive this. That's why it's got to be somebody there to judge that. That's a whole nother subject for another day. Amen. Mm -hmm. Second Thessalonians chapter two. Now, many of y'all ain't never been taught this. That's why it's important that you go to a good church that's established. Mm -hmm. uh, what ministers are trained and understand this. Yeah. Very important. Second Thessalonians chapter two and verse nine. Now watch this. Why? Again, remember God's word is more sure than any outward manifestation. Don't, you know, Brother Hagin used to say that people are so fickle minded that they're looking, you know, they're looking for the supernatural, but they're looking at the spectacular. He said, you keep watching the spectacular, you'll miss the supernatural. <laughs> yeah, you interested in all this spectacular. Woo, bang, pow, boom. He said, you'll get so caught up into that that you'll miss the supernatural. Yeah. He said, for we walk by faith and not by sight. You got to get into the word of God for yourself. Because, see, your pastor won't always be there with you. You got to know for yourself. Mm -hmm. Amen. All right. Second Thessalonians 2, 9. Even him whose coming is after what? The working of Satan with all power and what? Signs and lying wonders. That's why you got to be careful. Man, I could teach all day on that right there. Woo, man, I tell you. You got to be careful. <laughs> yeah, because Satan will come. Oh, he knew my address. Well, that just might be, he might be operating in familiar spirits. He's familiar with you. So that don't mean that it's God. Okay? So you got to remember, God's word is more sure than any outward manifestation. You got to be careful. Looking for the spectacular, you'll miss the supernatural. The number one way to be led of God is through his word. That's the number one way. Yeah. Not signs and wonders. But yet, watch this now. We thank God before you turn me off. Turn me, lead me right on there. Sit your behind still. Look, the word of God is the number one way to be led of God. God and his word are one. The word of God is everything that God says he is. What does the word say? That's the bottom line. That's why it's important that you get good fundamental teaching. Because mm -hmm. let me tell you, I done heard of some people messed up. I'm talking about saints, yeah. not ain't. I'm talking about saints, Christians, Christians, even ministers get messed up over somebody so-called prophesying or prophet lying over them. And they went out and did it. I didn't hear about people marrying other people because somebody prophesied somebody into your life and it was 100% devil. My, I didn't just about heard it all. That's why you got to know for yourself. You got to know the word of God for yourself. Yeah. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Be led by the word of God. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Why? Well, because see, Satan will come with what? Signs and lying wonders. Lion. Even, you know, you know what the Bible says? That even in the last day, that Satan will be able to fool even the elect of God. Mm. Now you're getting over into ministers, yeah. preachers. He said, in the last days, Satan will be able to fool even the elect of God. Mm -hmm. That's why you got to follow the word of God. Mm -hmm. I said, you got to follow the word of God. Now, 2 Peter chapter 1. Let's go there. 2 Peter. Are y'all getting something out of this? Yeah. Chapter 1. We're talking about the word of God being the most essential. That's the most important thing. I mean, woo! Yes, Jesus. Where would we be without the word of God? And yet, in, and in some countries, they won't even allow you to have the word of God. And yet, in the good old USA, freedom of religion, all this, we can do what we want. Where would we be without the most essential thing? Where would we be without the word of God? And that's why David said, thy word have I hid in my heart. Woo, Jesus, that I might not sin against thee. You got to hide God's word on the inside of your heart. Joshua chapter one, verse eight says, meditate in God's word day and night. I mean, chew on day and night. Get that word. We ought to become God inside minded. 
I said, we ought to become God inside, man. That word is on the inside of you. And let me tell you, the word of God will come out at, let me tell you, at the most inopportune time when you get the word of God in you, what you put in you will come out of you. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth is going to speak. Get that word in you, yeah. just like what Jesus did. And we'll talk more about that next time. But Jesus rebuked Satan. He was being tempted. But how did he rebuke him? With the word of God, not with a conspiracy theory, not with something just off the top of his head. But let me tell you, if it required the word of God for Jesus to get through the temptation, it's going to require the word of God for us to get through the temptation. Let me say that again. If it required the word of God for Jesus to get through the temptation, it's going to require the word of God for us to get through the temptation. Yes. Come on now. Yes. What did I say? Second Peter chapter one and verse 19. Here's, here's a great scripture. Again, the thought is God's word. God's word is more sure, more sure than any outward manifestation. Verse 19. We have also a what? More sure word of prophecy. Ah. Woo wee. <laughs> Where until you do well. Oh, we better stop right there. You need to underline this. You need to underline this. Yes. Where until you do well that you take heed. Uh -huh. Take heed to what? The word of God. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Let me read that again. Where until you do well. Where until you do well to take heed. Yeah. As unto a light that shineth in a dark place. Until the day dawn and the day star. <laughs> well day star is the word of God. That's the word of God. Until the day star arise in your heart. God's word is more sure than any outward manifestation. The day star. I like that part there. Where until you do well that you what? You take heed. You need to take heed to the word of God. All the answers to anything in this life can be found in the word of God. Like I said earlier, heaven and earth will pass away. But he said, my word will remain forever. Turn with me to Jeremiah 23. Y'all getting something? Yeah. Jeremiah 23. I got a word for you. What you got to say? Yeah. It better line up with the word. Or I ain't receiving none of it. And that's why you need to know the reputation of people. Watch this now. I got a word for somebody. Don't you allow just anybody to speak into your life. Yeah. They can mess you up. You don't just allow any old person coming in speaking into your life. Because if you hear the wrong thing and you take that thing, it could destroy you. I, I don't know how many people I have ministered to, somebody gave them the wrong word, it wasn't backed by the word of God or nothing, and they went out and done something stupid. Mm -hmm. Come on now. Jeremiah 23 and verse 29 says, Is not my word like as a fire, saith the Lord, and like a hammer that breaketh the rocks into pieces. Uh -huh. Is not my word like fire? Uh -huh. Fire shut up in my bones. Uh -huh. He said, is not my word like a hammer? A hammer, it breaks the rocks into pieces. The anointing destroys the yoke. The anointing destroys the yoke. The word of God is anointed. Hallelujah. And it will break the rock into pieces. It will destroy the yoke. Yes. Yeah, something about the word of God. The word of God is the most essential. Now for a moment, let's talk about the integrity of God's word. The integrity of God's word. God's word is unchanging, irrefutable, and powerful. God's word is unchanging, irrefutable, and powerful. God's word is final authority, not one of the other authorities. No, 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 no. Just another authority. Come on now. God's word is what? Final authority in the earth. You should base your life, Christians, come on now, we, we should base our life on the word of God. Yeah. 
I don't care what situation that you might be going through, whether it's marital, whether it's financial, whether it's business, I don't care what it is. You need to go to the word of God and find out what the word of God has to say about that situation. And that is how you conduct your life. Why? Because God's words should have final authority in the earth. How many times have you heard people say this and they just say it off the top of their head? Well, this the way I see it. Well, these are my plans. This is what I'm going to do. All right. All right. This is what I'm going to do. This is the way I, I could care less how you see it. Let's go to the word of God and see what the word of God has to say. And see, that's something that we must settle in our hearts. That's something we must settle in our hearts. What? That God's word is final authority, not just another authority. God's word is final authority in the earth. God and his word are one. God is not going to tell you something that's the complete opposite of his word. If God tell you something, hear me, hear me. If God tell you something, at least you think God tell you something and it goes against his word, he is no longer God. He is no longer, I'm sorry to tell you, he is no longer God. God ain't going to say anything that is the complete opposite. How many times you heard somebody say, well, I got this from the Lord, okay, what is it? And they don't even line up with the word of God. God said that I can have four wives. Yeah. He ain't what? <laughs> God told me, yeah, that I can have five wives, four wives, five of them, six if you want. Where is that in the Bible? How many times has somebody told you something that it ain't nowhere in the Bible? Well, you are yeah. not under any obligation to receive it. That's right. That's God right. and his word are one. Yeah. God is everything the word of God says he is. Mm -hmm. God's word is our infallible guide. God's word is our infallible guide. Turn with me to John's Gospel chapter 1 as we're winding down. Boy, that, that time goes by fast, don't it? John's Gospel chapter 1. Yeah. And again, today we're just introducing this subject. Amen. We're talking about the most essential, which is the Word of God. The most essential, the Word of God. John's Gospel chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning, come on, let's slow it down. Yep. In the beginning of all time, in the beginning, right in the beginning. was what? The Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. Yeah. The same was in the beginning with God. Mm -hmm. All things were made so the understood subject is who? The Word of God. And the further down you read, it'll begin to tell you who, who the Word is. Okay. Mm -hmm. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, or the word of God, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, life in the word, and the life was the light of men, and the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness. You know, John was the forerunner of Jesus Christ. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. He was not, John was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light, capital L. And that was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him. By who? This light, the word. And the word knew him not, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. You know the story. But as many as receive him, him who? The word. To them, you know, evidently this is talking about Jesus, right? Further down you read, it tells you who it is. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of flesh, nor of the will of man, but he was born of God. The word was made flesh. See, the further you read, it tells you who the word is. The word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. 
Verse 15, John bare witness of him and cried, this was he of whom I spake. Watch this now. He that cometh after me mm, is preferred before me for he was what? Before me. Why? Because he was in the beginning. Mm -hmm. That's a study for a whole nother day. Yes, <laughs> Amen. Glory to God. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. Now, Hebrews chapter 4. You can't get around the word. You can't get around the word. No. In him we live, move, and have our being. Mm -hmm. Without the word of God, you are nothing. You're nothing. The word of God is everything. Hebrews chapter 4. We're talking about the integrity of God's word. And verse 12 said, for the word of God, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, for the word of God is what? Quick and powerful. One translation says, for the word of God, it's alive. <laughs> I like that. It's alive. God's word is alive. Yeah. It's quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder, and it gives you the breakup of man. Man is a tripart being. Man is a spirit. He possesses a soul, lives in a body. Watch this. Piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and of the joints of the marrow, that's the body, and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Turn with me to 2 Timothy chapter 3. 2 Timothy chapter 3. In verse 16, we're talking about the integrity. I mean, your, your integrity is everything. It tells us who you are, right. what you all about, mm -hmm. your makeup. It's your, your integrity is you. Mm -hmm. It represents who you are. Yes. And that's what we're finding out, who, who and what the word of God is. Mm -hmm. Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, all scripture is given by inspiration or God breathe and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Now, why did God give us his word? Why did God give us his word? Verse 17 will tell you why he gave us his word. So that the man of God or the woman of God, there's no gender in God, so that the man of God may be what? Perfect. Huh? or mature, so that the man of God may mature and be thoroughly furnished unto all good works. How about Psalms 119? Now, I'm going to tell you right now, I ain't going to read all of them. Psalms 119 is loaded. Jesus. Uh, have y'all ever sat down and read the whole entire Psalms 119? Man, it's loaded. Psalms 119, verse 89. We're talking about the integrity of God's word. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. God's word is the most essential. Nothing compares to God's word. Why? Because God's word is simply irresistible. <laughs> God's word is simply irresistible. It's quick. It's powerful. It can minister to the tripart nature of man. God's word can, can heal your body. Well, let's back it up. God's word can feed your spirit. God's word can renew your mind and God's word can heal your physical body. It's the only tool that can minister to the total makeup of man. That's the only tool in this world that can minister to the tripart nature of man. Yes. I'll say it again. God's word can develop you spiritually. God's word can renew your mind yes. and God's word can heal your physical body. <laughs> Psalms 119 verse 89. Forever, O Lord, Forever. Now, what does forever mean? It means forever, eternity, now and forever, Alpha Omega, forever, right? Forever, O oh Lord. Thy word is what? Settled in heaven. See, God's word has already been tested. God's word has already been tried. That's why God's word is final authority in the earth. That's it, baby. Ain't no more testing and trying the word of God. You and I might get tested and tried, but ain't no testing God's word. Put God's word to the test. No, it's already been tested. God's word is forever settled, forever settled in heaven. How about 1 Peter chapter 1? 1 Peter chapter 1 
I'm almost done. First Peter chapter 1 and verse 25. We're talking about the integrity of God's word. God's word is forever settled. Heaven and earth have passed away. And he said, my word will still be here forever. Hey. Nothing can outlast. Man, n nothing can outlast. outlast the word of God. <laughs> Not even the ever ready, ever ready bunny. Mm -hmm. I think I said that right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Y'all yeah, know the bunny that yeah, goes. Every, okay. uh, yeah. What's the name of it, honey? Do Energized, you know? bunny. Energized bunny. That's it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Not even the bunny. No, God's word remains forever. How about verse 25? 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 25. But the word of God endures for how long? Forever. And this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. Oh, there. God's word remains forever. Then Matthew 24. Matthew 24. And I've kind of been paraphrasing this and quoting the scripture all day. I've been quoting it since I got started. Okay. Matthew 24, verse 35. Jesus said, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. Mm, mm, mm. My words will remain forever. You, let me tell you, you can't get around the word of God. God's word is the answer to every social ill in society. Yeah. God's word is the answer to everything that you could ever go through. How do you love your wife? Get into the word of God. How do you love your husband? Get into the word of God. How do you cut a business deal? Get into the word of God. How do I treat my neighbor? Get into the word of God. How do I treat my boss? Get into the word of God. How do I save money? Get into the word of God. I, I mean, every. how do I deal with my children? Get into the word of God. Come on. I mean, every subject that you could ever imagine or think can be answered by God's word. Why? Because God's word is the most essential. God's word is simply irresistible. Oh, yes. Did you get something from the word of God? Yes. Amen. Praise yes. God. Yes. Amen. Yes. Yes. I tell you, God is good all the time. That's why we stick with the word of God. Hey, be a stickler. Brother Hagin used to tell us, he said, I'm a stickler for the word. And, we, and all of us ought to be stickler for the word of God. Yeah. Students of the scripture. Amen. Mm -hmm. Become students of the scripture. Perhaps there might be someone here that don't know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. If you're here tonight and, and, and you're watching and you're listening and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10 verse 9 and 10. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thy heart. God has raised him from the dead and said, Thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Verse 13 says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I love what John 3, 16 says, For God so loved the world, or God so loved you and I, that he gave the best that he had, his only begotten son. Though whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but shall have everlasting life. So I will love to pray with you tonight. And I'm going to ask others as well to pray along with me in the name of Jesus. Say, Dear Heavenly Father, Dear Heavenly Father I, come I come to you this evening as humble as I know how. Lord, I ask you to come into my life. Lord, I'm tired of living the old way. I'm ready to, for a new life. Lord you, said in your word, Lord, you said in your word, if I confess with my mouth, with my mouth that, Jesus Lord, that Jesus is Lord, and if I believe in my heart in my that heart, God raised you from the dead on the third day, you said, Lord, you said, Lord I'll be born again. Be born so, again. Right now, Lord, so right now, Lord, I turn from my old ways, I my old and ways. I turn to you now, Lord. I, to you, Lord. I confess with my mouth with my that mouth. Jesus is right now. My Lord, Savior, and Master. My Lord, Savior, and, Master. and I believe in my heart that God raised you from the dead on the, the third day. On the third day. Come into my life, Lord, into my life, Lord and, make something wonderful and make something wonderful out of my life. Out of my life. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name.
Amen. Amen. Well, praise God. Man, we're so excited for you guys. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Man, we're so happy for you. The angels are rejoicing in heaven. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, I got a really nice book for you that I want to get into your hands. Amen. And a really nice book. Where do I go from here? You know, pastor, now that I'm born again, man, I need some help. I need somebody to help me along the way. Well, I wrote this book just for you. Amen. It's called, Where Do I Go From Here? And uh, it's got topics such as, uh, does water baptism save you? Now that you are a new creation in Christ, what do I do next? Knowing who you are in Christ, what do I do when I make a mistake? So you got different topics there. This is a great book for you. Yeah. Amen. And we want to get this book into your hands to help develop you, to help disciple you or mentor you. Amen. Yeah. Now, how do I get that book? All right. First of all, you need to go to our website. Amen. If you want this free book, go to our website and that's at New Beginnings CLC. Or I should say New Beginnings Plural clc.org again go to new beginnings plural with a s clc.org and when you get inside there go to the prayer request tab and when you get there fill out the little information name and address so that we can get this book to you in the name of it it's a great book amen we need to get this book into your hands so that you can grow and develop so once again congratulations Welcome to the family of God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Yeah. Glory to God, man. We're so excited yeah. for you. Well, how many of you enjoyed the word tonight? Woo. I said, how many of you enjoyed the word tonight? Amen. Yeah. Praise God. It's opportunity to prosper time. Yeah. It's time to give. Amen. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah. You know, the word of God says, giving it shall be given unto us. Good measure, press down, sinking together, and running over shall men give back to our bosom. Yeah. You know, word of God goes on to tell us that God loves a cheerful giver whose heart is in his giving. Yeah. Then the Bible says in Malachi chapter 3, to bring ye all the tithes and offerings into the storehouse. Well, the storehouse is the church of God, that there may be meat in my house, and prove me here now with. Now with what? Your tithes and offerings. Mm -hmm. That if I will not open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you don't have room enough to receive. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, there's more windows and doors. Yeah. How many you could afford for God to open up the windows? Amen. We got to be a giver. Amen. Praise God. Why? God loves a cheerful giver. The more you give to him is the more he'll give to you. Yeah. Now, there are three ways that we encourage you to give. Number one, through PayPal. Amen. And that's New Beginnings Plural. New Beginnings Plural with the S, clc.org. And that's through PayPal, New Beginnings Plural, clc.org. Oh, you can give by way of Cash App. And that's at New Beginnings Plural, clc. Yeah. New Beginnings Plural, clc through Cash App. Or you can simply just mail it in at P.O. Box 320 a P.O. Box 320-658, and that's Flowood, Mississippi, 39232. That's Flowood, Mississippi, 39232. Well, I trust that you've done all that you're going to do regarding our tithes and offerings and giving into the kingdom of God. Let's hold up our offering to our great high priest and let us agree in faith. Most gracious Father, we come to you today in the name of Jesus. We do count it an honor and a privilege to give this day. And Lord, we thank you that as we give, that you'll give back to us good measure, pressed down, singing together, and running over so men give back to our bosom. And Lord, we give cheerfully because our heart is in our giving. Yes, Lord. And Lord, we just thank you that as we give, it'll cause new beginnings to continue to enlarge its tents so that we can reach out to a lost and dying world with the glorious gospel. And Father, we just thank you that more cities will be one to you, Lord. Yes. Ministering spirits, go forth now and cause our return to come unto us, for we believe that we receive a 100-fold return in this lifetime, wealth and riches of being in our house. In Jesus' name, all that agree with this prayer, shout it. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Praise yes. God. Yes. And again, on behalf of my wife and I, we thank you guys so much 
for giving, uh, especially during all the difficult times, you know, all last week, you know, we couldn't even get outside the house, all that good stuff. And, you know, people, I guess they went through a few things with mailing it out. The mail didn't run right. Post office was shut down. All kinds of stuff was going on. Oh, wow. Hey, man, we were locked down almost for a solid week. Oh. Hey, man, but we thank you guys for your faithfulness. You're faithful because God has been faithful to you. Yes. Amen. So, amen. Don't forget Sunday. Amen. On Sunday, we're right back into the Word of God. We're talking about Christ the Healer at 10 o'clock a.m. Central Time. And that's Sunday. We're on the subject of Christ the Healer in the name yes. of Jesus. Yes. Amen. Praise God. So on behalf of my wife and I, we want you to know we love you and that Jesus is Lord.